So for a while now, I've been saying that fitness trackers don't tap into their full potential. A lot of them amount to basically fancy pedometers that count your calories. And as I've talked about in the past, that's not even that accurate. I'm not saying that they're not useful. I'm just saying that, I mean, they haven't really changed, have they, since they first came along? What can they do that they didn't used to be able to do? Heart rate monitoring, great, that's it. What I really like about the Ura Ring and why I think it's the perfect device for a biohacker is that it gives you a lot more granular detail and some different type of detail. And this is really useful, not just for improving your fitness, but actually for improving your health, your well-being, your focus, your energy levels. This is something that I think has been possible for a long time, but these are the first guys that I think are really doing it. They're creating a health tracker that can make you feel better and perform better. And I think that's awesome. So the first Ura Ring was launched with a crowdfunding campaign and it was really popular and it was very successful. The Ura Ring 2 is an iterative update, which is nicer to look at, much more svelte. And as it's just kind of catching on and gaining momentum, for many, this will be your first exposure to the device. As you can see, it's a ring, very similar to the Motive Ring, which I also reviewed at Android Authority and thought was okay. But actually, this is a nicer design and a more impressive device. Being a ring, of course, means that it's very um, low key. You don't notice it. When you're wearing it, you forget all about it, especially if you normally wear a ring. It's not that much heavier or that much different from my wedding band. At the same time, it means that you can still wear a watch. You can still wear another fitness tracker on your wrist. And it has advantages because being on your finger means that it can actually get a better read of your heart rate as well as picking up your body temperature. And that's one of the first things that I'll mention that the Ura Ring 2 measures that not many other health trackers actually do. In terms of battery life, you can go six days without charging it. It has a memory built in, so you can go a long time without needing to charge it. You won't lose your data. It comes with a very nice little charging stand that makes it very quick and easy to top it up. The box is also really nice. The attention to detail is great for a small startup. Um, it's waterproof, so that's great. So you can wear it in the shower, etc. And generally, it's really well designed, lots of quality of life features, attention to detail, and it makes it great to use. The downside normally of any ring-shaped fitness tracker is that it'll scratch when you're exercising on your weights, etc. That was a big problem with the Motive ring that I reviewed. However, for the Ura ring, it's significantly less of a problem. It looks really nice, and it's only picked up really tiny dinks, nothing too different from my actual ring. So there's no reason you can't keep it on whilst you're training. Of course, being worn on your hand does mean it's a bit harder for it to pick up certain movements, but I'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment. As for what the Ura Ring does, its main focus is on sleep and recovery. So it's a sleep tracker that you can wear during the night. And when you wake up in the morning and check the app, it works for both Android and iOS, you'll be able to see a breakdown of all your different sleep stages, how long it took you to get off to sleep, all the stuff that you normally get on a Fitbit, but with a lot more extra detail as well. That extra detail includes things like your resting heart rate, but you don't just see the number for your resting heart rate, you also get to see how quickly your heart rate drops, which tells you something about how rested you are and whether you've been too active just before you went to sleep. You can see things like your body temperature, as I mentioned, which is really interesting, and that can sometimes help to predict whether you might be getting ill or something. You'll want to wear the Ura Ring 2 for a little while because that'll establish a baseline for things like your body temperature. And then when you look at it later on, you can see when you've um, strayed from that baseline too much and when that might indicate that you're a little bit unwell. It'll also show you if you woke up during the night, how long it took you to get to sleep, and it'll show you your heart rate variability. And that's something that's really interesting. And it also track this during the day. Heart rate variability, I've talked a little bit about on this channel before, but I intend to talk about it more. Basically, your heart rate isn't a steady boom, boom, boom. It varies slightly all the time. And this is due to whether you're breathing in or breathing out. That's good. You want your heart rate to vary when you breathe in or breathe out. It basically makes you slightly more parasympathetic and slightly more sympathetic. However, if you're very stressed, your heart rate stays elevated and doesn't reduce when you breathe out. And therefore, your heart rate variability goes down. And this is an indicator that you might be stressed either mentally or physically. And that means that you might want to take it easy the next day at the gym. Actually, I did get really ill just recently. I mean, really ill. I had like multiple infections and my mouth filled with ulcers and I had terrible indigestion and I had to wear a mask around Emmy. So yeah, pretty bad. But it was a great opportunity to test the Ura Ring, always look on the bright side. And what was really impressive was that the Ura Ring noticed the elevated temperature. It noticed that my heart rate was like 90 BPM 
during the night. That was my resting heart rate. And so it obviously recognized that something was wrong and told me to take it easy. And that might sound like something obvious that any health tracker should be able to do, but most fitness trackers would just be like, you had an elevated heart rate, that's great. You must've been getting loads of activity or you're knocking it out the park. And then it would have been like, stop sitting around, get up and exercise. So yeah, I mean, that's the great thing about it. It can recognize what's actually going on in your body and advise you on that basis. Up in the morning, you take a look at all this data. There's just much more to dive into in the Ura app than there would be with a Fitbit. It's very accurate and it's really interesting. And if you are passionate about this sort of stuff, then you'll love having that much data presented. And the fact that they can get all this from a ring is really cool. What's more is that it then coalesces this information as well as information picked up during the day to give you a readiness score. And this is basically telling you whether you should take it easy or whether you can go hard when you are working out the next day, when you're focusing on work. Basically, if your heart rate is good, your resting heart rate is good, if you had a good night's sleep, if you're um, not too stressed, all these things, that will give you a better readiness score and it'll say go for it, hit it hard at the gym. But if your heart rate variability is low, if your heart rate is high when it's resting, if you woke up a lot during the night, then it might say to take it easy the next day. Something else that Ura does though that's different from other fitness trackers and that I think is really cool is that it doesn't just base this advice on what happened the day before, like so many devices do. Instead, it'll look at your week, your month as a whole, it'll look at your baselines and how you perform, and it'll tell you then how serious that one night of bad sleep is. If it's one bad night and you've had a great week, then it'll say, you know, carry on, you didn't have a great night's sleep, but you're gonna be all right. However, if you've had 20 bad nights of sleep, then it's gonna tell you that you should really take it easy and focus on your recovery. And this is really useful. One more thing I just wanna show you here that's really cool is that you can also view your stats in the Ura cloud here, and you can actually get a little bit more data and you can display it in some different ways. And what I really like here is the ability to create a chart where you look at two different values overlaid on top of each other. So here's my deep sleep time and my temperature deviation. So we can see if there's any relationship between my temperature, my body temperature, and how much deep sleep I'm getting. And it looks like there is some correlation here, although it's definitely not one-to-one. -one. Here my body temperature goes all the way up and my deep sleep goes all the way down. And that was obviously because that's when I was ill. You can put anything here, such as your respiration, your activity, yeah, your respiratory rate, your activity, your resting heart rate. And likewise, you can put anything on this end and see how they line up. So you can see if any changes you're making are actually having an impact. Again, you just don't get this sort of data, this sort of flexibility with many other trackers. I missed the Microsoft Band actually. That was a really good tracker. I had a really good website too. The amount of data here is massive and the app can be a little bit tricky to fiddle through sometimes, but it's being constantly updated and it does give a lot of information. Pretty much anything you see, you can tap and it'll give you further explanation. And often this leads to a link over at the Ura blog where it'll talk about what things mean, how you can improve them, etc. So it is very detailed, but it is also accessible for those that prefer, you know, simple advice. Obviously, many of you know that I'm recently a new parent. I've got a new, beautiful little daughter called Amelia Ava Shinitsky, and wonderful though she is, she does prevent me from sleeping quite as I'd like to. In fact, on average at the moment, I'm getting four hours. If I'm lucky, sometimes three, sometimes five. We're both exhausted and fitting work and things around that. It's a challenge. Anyone who's a parent will know. This also means, however, that it's a fantastic time to be testing a device like this. I've really put it through its paces and I can say it's super accurate. So if I wake up just to change a nappy for five minutes, that will be reflected in the app. However, there were a couple of shortcomings that I also noticed. One is that it won't pick up a daytime nap. I guess it assumes you're not gonna sleep during the day. And that's a bit of a shame, or it didn't when I did it anyways. That's a bit of a shame because that is a great coping strategy and a great life hack. And it's something that I'd like them to consider implementing in future. It also didn't notice one night when I completely didn't sleep. When we were actually giving birth, well, Hannah was giving birth, and I was in the delivery room with her. I didn't sleep for a whole night, and I was hoping that the app would say, you know, serious, serious need for recovery, do something about it. However, it didn't say that. It kind of assumed I wasn't wearing the ring. It acted as though I just hadn't recorded my sleep that night. And that's a shame, obviously, considering that it knew I was wearing it because, you know, it was attached and it was picking up my heart rate and things for that whole time. So 
that's something else that they could maybe look at. But these are extreme and unusual circumstances. On the whole, the sleep tracking is incredibly accurate and I will say that it's the best sleep tracking experience that I've ever used. So that's pretty high praise. During the day, the Ura Ring 2 will continue to track things like your steps, your calories burned, your activity levels, and all this is also used in that readiness score that you get. However, here it doesn't perform quite as well. It can detect some activities automatically, such as runs, and that's really impressive considering it's just a ring, and that must be quite tricky. Obviously, the kind of exercises I do, things like bench presses, pull-ups, often won't get recorded. I'll have to add them in manually. That's a shame, but it's completely understandable, and attempts to try and auto-detect exercises, such as from companies like Garmin, have been more of a hindrance than a help, to be honest. It is a shame, however, that if you miss a routine, if you forget to add that you did a workout, on one day, you can't go back to a previous day and add it in retrospect. And that is a bit of a shame. And I spoke to some people at Ura about this and they said it's because the algorithm is so complicated it would drastically change your readiness score. And sure, that would be annoying, but at least it would be slightly more accurate. Still though, bearing in mind that the readiness score is based on your you know, biological metrics, it shouldn't really matter too much. Your heart rate is either strong or it's not. It doesn't really matter whether it's noticed it's because you worked out or because you didn't. For those that like to have perfectly accurate data though, that's a bit of a shame. What's also a shame is that on Android at the moment, there's no way of syncing this with other apps. That means no MyFitnessPal, that means no Google Health, it means you can't wear it with another um, tracker with a Fitbit or a Garmin and then have, it, have that add the workouts for you. You can do this on Apple by syncing it with Apple's Health Kit and I've been assured it is coming to Android very soon in 2019. So whilst it's not ideal, it is something that's going to be fixed soon. And until then, you can just add the activities yourself. Just don't forget to do it. The step counting I also wasn't a huge fan of because it seems to be way too high compared to other devices. Again, I spoke to Ura about this and they told me it's because they're not actually tracking specific steps so much as the metabolic equivalent. So it's not that I took 2000 steps, it's that my movement was the equivalent of 2000 steps in terms of the calories I burned. And in some ways that's useful, but it's a bit confusing because in the app it actually calls them steps, it doesn't say this. And at the same time, it'd be nice to have a pedometer in there as well, especially seeing as it won't sync up with another device that you can use that way. So again, it's not a huge issue. You can just count steps another way with a wrist-worn device. And like I say, counting steps is a bit pointless in my opinion anyways. However, it is something I hope that they'll add soon and it could be a bit clearer in the app. In short, I'd say it's not the best fitness tracker then. It's not gonna replace a running watch. It's not gonna tell you things like your VO2 max or your stride or your cadence. You can't use it to track your GPS route. Likewise, you're not gonna wanna use it to log all of your workouts and things. It's something different. It's a health tracker more than a fitness tracker. And I think that's great because fitness trackers, like I say, they've become boring. We need something like this. And it's just a great example of how else we can use this technology to learn more about ourselves, to get more data, to perform better. And I think that's awesome. And if you're a biohacker, you're bound to really enjoy that. For everyone else, I still highly recommend this as a purchase. I think it's really cool. It's really small. It's a great way to get a better insight into your health. It's a little bit costly considering some of the downsides. So for Android users, I would say maybe just wait until they bring that ability to synchronize with Google Health. But if you're into this sort of thing, go for it. I think it's a really great device and something really different. I hope they continue down this track and I can't wait to see what they continue to add. Oh, and support for the app has been really good. I've seen lots of updates already. Onboarding they've added, just got a firmware update. So who knows what else is coming. I'm gonna keep adding more content on this topic over at the blog, probably occasional videos. I want to talk about my experiences as a new parent and using this to track sleep. So stay tuned if you wanna hear more about the Ura Ring 2. And I'd love to know in the comments down below what you think about this and of me doing reviews like this on the channel in general. So I hope you found this video useful and interesting, guys. If you did, then please leave a like, please share it around and comment down below. All those things massively help me out. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Oh, and I just wanted to quickly apologize for the lack of content recently between having a baby and Christmas and then getting really ill. I've not been quite as productive as usual, but I'm back full time now. And a lot of the stuff that I've been promising is on the way. I'm really close to doing the ninja training video. That also took a bit longer because I had to do so much research and I've been really working on a good script. Plus I want to edit it really well. So hopefully it's worth the wait. Um, that should be the next video after this one. So stay tuned if that sounds good and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.